Hey guys, welcome back to the Man Cave with Big Kev. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is part three of the emergency box and this time we're going over water. Last time we went over shelter, so we just went over tarps, how much you should spend, how to tie them down or what to tie them down with, and uh, just a few things to keep you out of the elements. So let's get into it. Okay, so water's going to be one of the main things that you're gonna to wanna to store for a bug out or bug in situation. Just because you're bugging in, it doesn't mean you're gonna have water. In some cases, you may be cut off completely from your water source. So being prepared and having water with you is going to be a really good option. So a couple of those options are, one of these here, which is 10 liters, I got this at Aldi for $4.99, no, $3.99, it was four bucks for 10 liters of water. Um, so really good value there. That's the cheapest water that I have found actually. So really good value. And alternatively, you can grab some of these. Uh, I'm gonna keep both of these so that I can um, essentially have some for washing up and some for drinking as well. So. We'll probably leave these for drinking um, because these here are actually a really good way of keeping an eye on your intake. So we'll go over consumption of water and what your daily intake should be for you and your kids. All right, consuming water. How much do you need minimum to survive in a bug out or bug in situation? You've been completely cut off. It is recommended that the average male should have 3.8 liters of water a day for your daily intake. Now that doesn't mean that you have to drink 3.8 uh, liters of water because you will procure some of that or absorb some of that from your food. So about three liters, three and a half liters a day in um, bottled consumption and the rest you should get through your food. At a pinch, you can get away with less because it's only 72 hours. But really speaking, prolonged absence of water is not gonna do you any health benefits. So 3.7 liters for men. For women, it is 2.7 liters a day. For women that are pregnant, that goes up to three liters a day. And if they are breastfeeding, it is 3.8 liters a day. So to put that into perspective, a really good way of working that out is with these ones here. So the average male is six of these. The average female is four and a half of these. Uh, pregnant is five and breastfeeding is uh, six, same as the average male. Now, I don't see a lot of this online uh, with water consumption for children. So I did a bit of research and it is recommended that um, four to eight years old, you are supposed to have seven cups a day. Uh, nine to 13 year old girls is nine, and boys is 10, and 14 to 18 year old girls is 10, and the boys is 14. So that should be your minimum intake for uh, your day. All right, let's go over a few things that you can have here to help you procure water, uh, to help you filter water, to sterilize water, and to keep you hydrated. So we'll start off with these here, these are coffee filters. So if you do have to gather water at some stage from a dam or a creek or somewhere of the sorts, then these are going to help get out all the chunky bits uh, it's not going to get everything out, but it's very, going to be very handy for using your filter because you're going to prolong the life of your filter by having less stuff go through it, uh, less grime and whatnot go through it. So it uh, makes it easier to back flush and you get longevity out of your filter. A good way to gather water is one of these fluid pumps. I bought this one at Aldi for seven bucks not on the shelves anymore, surprise, surprise, because they are one of those specialty item things. 
but there are many of these sorts of things online that you can go and have a look at. So it's pretty much an inlet and an outlet. This also does air as well, so it comes with a little pump stuff, but there's another video on this here if you want to see what it's capable of. And I'll put that at a button at the end of the video. So really good for um, pumping high volumes of water, especially if one of these gets emptied, uh, you can just fill this one back up with dirty water and then use your filter to filter it. Which brings us to the filter. There are a lot of filters on the market that you can get. You can get charcoal filters, ceramic filters, fiberglass filters, all sorts of stuff, right? So I chose the Sawyer Mini uh, because it is an absolutely fabulous bit of kit. These here will filter 100,000 litres of water. That's a lot of water. You're never going to go through that much water in a 72 hour period. So really good bit of gear. It comes with one of these little squeeze bags that you just fill it up, screw it to the bottom of your filter, squeeze it and you've got instant water. Also in the video for the pump you'll see that I can use this as an inline filter while pumping water through that. Sterilizing your water. There are many ways that you can sterilize water as well. If you're not happy uh, with it just going through a filter, you can boil your water. It's recommended 12 to 15 minutes at a rolling boil to kill whatever's in it. Um, water contamination is going to be a whole different ball game. Uh, so depends what kind of situation you're in, but we won't go over that today. Um, that's a whole other beast. So. A good way to sterilize your water is Aquatabs or sterilization tablet. These come in many different forms as well. So these ones here were only $15 from Kathmandu. And this will filter up to 50 liters of water. And pretty much all they are is just little tablets as such. And all the instructions are on the back there for how many tablets to use for how much water so all the information's on there for you you can get other ones there with iodine tablets as well and they'll come with a little jar of tablets on on the side and you can pop those in and it'll get rid of that iodine taste so um, many different options so do some research for those and uh, also the soya mini um, or whatever filter you feel is suitable for your needs. Uh, something that I don't have on the table today is hydrolytes. Keeping hydrated is going to be paramount. Uh, keeping those salts and minerals in your system, especially in very hot weather. This is Australia, so it gets very hot and you can get dehydrated very quick. Uh, sometimes you know you can drink all the water in the world but if you're active during the day you're going to lose salts and minerals out of your sweat and you need to replace those at night and that's going to help you with um, it's going to prevent you from getting cramps and other ailments from losing those salts and minerals so there you go guys that is what I have for you today with the water again I do uh, wish that the more experienced people will come on here and give some more information on any of this stuff or stuff uh, other stuff that I haven't shown here and tips and tricks to keeping hydrated in a crisis um, sure you can go and buy this stuff off the shelf but you don't want to wait for it as soon as a crisis hits I know if for a fact because I went through the 2011 floods that people just went absolutely mental at the shops and just bought everything out. Um, people were fighting over loaves of bread, people were fighting over milk and it, it was just absolute pandemonium. So having it stored at your house is going to be your best option, that's what prepping is all about and um, that's what your emergency supplies are for so you can just wait it out and then after everything settles down you can go and factory reset pretty much just restock 
resupply and uh, you'll pretty much be apples. So that's it guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit the bell for notifications. Go and check me out on Instagram and Facebook as well uh, for behind the scenes sort of stuff. So thank you so much for watching and until the next video, we'll see you later.